to you this morning, Lord Jesus. And we thank you, Jesus, for all of our prayers you have answered. And all of the prayers you said to wait. And all of the prayers you said no to, Lord God. And we thank you, Jesus. And this morning, Lord Jesus, that we will lift up your name, Lord God. We will bless your name, Lord Jesus. And this morning, my God, bless us with your wisdom, your knowledge, Lord Jesus. Open our understanding and help our unbelief, Lord God. Jesus, in your name we ask, my God. Amen and amen. Thank you, Jesus. I am glad you may be seated. Hallelujah. This morning, our lesson in the face of opposition. Okay, when somebody against us, we're going to have a little word of God on it. What do we do? when we face opposition. And we know that a lot of time we back down. We go into a corner. And we like give up or even think about it or actually giving up, stop coming to the sanctuary. You know, when we face opposition and we always begin to think, when I didn't go to church, I didn't have this much opposition. I had friends, I had this, I had that. But now I'm a Christian, but it seems like everything is against me. That's how we think. And as we read the scripture, you will realize it's about Nehemiah, how he faced opposition when he was re trying to rebuild the sanctuary, the temple of God, and the wall that surrounds Jerusalem and rebuilding Jerusalem. He faced opposition. Many times, the opposition comes from within, within the family, within, from within the friends, whatever we have. That's where the opposition seems to come. There's even times the Bible talks about there's going to be a person that's going to try and split the church also. So there's always an opposition even within the sanctuary of God. So here, that's why <clears throat> open your Bible to First Peter chapter 5 and verse 8. We need to know about this opposition. Here, Apostle Peter tells us, he says, be sober, be vigilant. That means watchful, be alert. Because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walked about seeking whom he may devour. So there's going to be always an opposition surrounding us. Remember that. So here, Apostle Peter is telling us, be watchful, be alert. Because Satan uses discouragement and fear you might realize it. Just as the fear that the government is bestowing upon us, 
through the squires, how they're telling us that this virus is dangerous. That's why we wear the mask on us. Okay. And they, the leader seems like they don't lead. They just try to boss us around. Okay. But before the election, they told us, if you vote for me, I'll be your leader. A leader is like a shepherd. It goes before you. Just as the Bible talks about Jesus as the shepherd leading us to still waters and green pastures. That's the leader. But the leader turns when we elect them, they turn into bosses. They start bossing us around. Do this, do that, do that, do that. Fear this, be afraid of that, all that. But here, the Word of God is already warning us. He's telling us, be vigilant, be alert. The enemy, Satan, He's surrounding, walking around you. And here, he uses discouragement and fear. And when we get that fear and discouragement, we feel defeated. We're already, he puts us in our defeated situation where we think, I can't make it, I can't do it. We even question God. God, where are you? Where are you? So this is to discourage us. So let's read Nehemiah chapter uh, 4, verses uh, 17 and 18. I'm going to use those two scriptures. Okay, you can read the rest of it. But these two scriptures here, it, it says, they, they which feel built on the wall, and they that bear burdens, with those that lay them, every one with one of his hand wrought in the work, and the other hand held a weapon. Verse 18, for the builders, Every one that had his sword girded by his side, and so built, and he that sounded the trumpet was by me. Okay, he said he was watchful for his workers. Here Nehemiah is a leader, and he went to God to see what they should do against this opposition. For Sambalus and Toby, they were against them, and they began to gather enemies, armies, to fight on them. So here, Nehemiah went to God, and God revealed this to him. He says, be alert, be watchful, put a sword on your side, work with one hand, one arm, be ready to battle with the other hand and arm. He says, but continue doing the work, rebuilding the temple, Jerusalem, and the wall, but be watchful. That's what he said, be ready to fight. That's what he's telling God told Nehemiah. Because many a time, as a Christian, it seems like we don't know how to fight. Amen? Amen. When trouble, opposition come, we just go to the corner 
and we let Shiva We say, poor old me. That person say about this, say me, and that that kind of person over here just laughs about me. But here the Bible tells us, be watchful and be ready to fight. Amen. He says what? When the opposition comes in like a flood, he says, raise the banner, the flag, with Jesus' name on it. And Jesus, he will come and help you. So here the scripture is telling us, use your weapon the sword, the word of God. Use it. Be ready to use it. When Satan comes, be ready. When death comes, be ready. Use the sword. At the same time, do the work of God. Amen. That's as they were doing here in Nehemiah. Don't go around feeling defeated. Amen? Don't get discouraged. Don't quit. Stand. Stand. Amen? Hallelujah. Micah chapter 7 and verse 8 says, Take comfort. When you face opposition, take comfort because God is going to fight for you. Amen? Know God. Develop a relationship with God. Get close to God. Amen? Get close to Him and He will fight for you. Matthew 6 verses 33 say, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all these things will be added unto you. Amen. When you feel opposition, go unto the kingdom of God. Go into the throne room of grace to obtain mercy and find grace to help in a time of need. So when we face opposition, we are in need. We need God to help us. We need help and we need to look to God. Amen. Know God. As I said, relationship development with Him. And He, remember, He calls us what? Friend. He says, You are not my servant. You are my friend. You are born again of the water and of the Spirit. So you are my son. Amen. So as a father, here God is telling us to come to him in time of our needs. Instead of trying to face Satan or death by ourselves, we need to do it with God. We need to know this. That's why, that's why he tells us this. About the baptism. He says, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. 
That's God Himself in you and over you. Amen. Hallelujah. So with all and here Jesus when he arose from the dead he said all power in heaven and on earth is given to me and I have the keys of death hell and the grave that's what he said amen so we have Jesus in us as our everlasting father as the mighty God and the Holy Spirit in us and over us. Okay? So why should we be afraid of opposition? Why should we be afraid of people that talk against us? Why should we be ashamed when people laugh about us? Right? Because you have all this power. It is for us to use, for us to pray in the Holy Ghost every time we pray. We can pray in the Holy Ghost over our food. We can pray in the Holy Ghost in the morning when we wake up. We can pray in the Holy Ghost in the evening when we're going to sleep. Amen. That's the purpose of why we have the Holy Ghost. It's just not to show it off when there's a big old conference where everybody's shouting, speaking the, and me, myself, dancing around, speaking, no. It's for me, the Holy Ghost, Jesus in me, is to pray, even in the prayer closet, even in the throne room of God, have a spiritual conversation, a heavenly language with Jesus speaking in the Holy Ghost because it is the power that we must know about. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. So if we pray in the Holy Ghost, we put our trust in God. Amen. When we pray in the Holy Ghost, we tell the devil, death, opposition, I'm not giving up. I'm not giving up. Amen. Hallelujah. So we must do that. And also, in a time of opposition, we need to ask God, to help us. God, I need you. This situation has come upon me. This disease, this sicknesses, this discouragement, this hopelessness, it came upon me. And I need your help to get out of this we put that in God's hand, and at the same time, we keep doing His will. We keep teaching, we keep preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. We keep praying for people. We keep giving uh, Bible studies. Yeah. Amen. Even though we're going through something. Opposition. Amen. Hallelujah. That's what... The, the Holy Ghost, Jesus, is all about. When opposition arrives, we go to God. Amen. As we read First Peter 5 8. Now let us read Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 7. 
Here the Lord is telling us. He says, The Lord shall cause thy enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. They shall come out against thee one way and flee before thee seven ways. Amen? You're going to chase your enemies. You're going to chase Satan this way, death this way, sicknesses and diseases every which way. You're going to chase them. You're going to chase hopelessness away. You're going to chase discouragement away. This is what God is telling us. Do be not despair. This is what he's saying. Amen. Therefore, this, he tells us every morning, pray these words of God. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That puts your opposition. It pushes your opposition away. Even when they come, you don't feel bad about it. You don't even feel it. Amen. Hallelujah. Therefore, in Nehemiah, remember the scripture says, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's think about it. And here in Micah, chapter 7 and verse 8, a warning to the opposition, the devil, death, sicknesses and diseases, poverty, even old age. Okay? Here the scripture says what? Rejoice not against me. Oh, my enemy. When I fall, I shall arise. When I sit in darkness, the Lord shall be a light unto me. Amen. Wherever I am, this God, His name is Jesus, is going to be there with me. Where? Inside of me as the Holy Ghost. All around me as the shadow of his lean. Amen. Hallelujah. This is what is uh, the scripture here. Nehemiah, Michael is saying that. He said, don't rejoice against me. That's because I tripped. Don't rejoice. I'm going to get back up. Amen. I'm going to rise up again. Amen. Depression, oppression. Listen to me, you spirits. Listen. Don't rejoice. I'm going to rise up. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. This is what God is saying to each one of us now. Because I notice people hit the panic button. The second wave of the virus, they say. We don't know what the leaders are going to say. The governors, 
the president. They want to shut down businesses again. What shall I do? Go to Smith and buy out all the toilet paper or what? See, we hit the panic button. We forgot God. We forgot we had the Holy Ghost in us. We forgot we had all that power. When the mighty God, Jesus, as the Holy Ghost, speaks through us, and it is so. Right? If you book, read the book of Revelation, and God said, let there be. And it was so. Amen? Hallelujah. We need to think about these things. That we have this power. Why are we afraid? Why are we afraid of what some of these ungodly people say? Why are we afraid of people that don't go to church, they don't know God, laughing about us, talking about us? Why are we afraid of them? Why are we afraid of Satan and death? Jesus defeated Satan. He stepped on the head of Satan. He even took the keys of death, grave, and hell from him. Amen. Death is defeated. Jesus arose from the dead. Now, death is just a servant. No longer a boss or anything. We must remember that. That we have a God that will help us against opposition. Whoever is against you, you have God to help you. Amen. Hallelujah. So he said, you work with one hand. You hold a weapon, a sword, in the other hand. And always do the will of God. Keep moving forward. Keep moving with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Keep reaching into the world that is lost. Keep praying for people that need healing. Keep praying for people that need delivered from our sin. Amen. Hallelujah. The sword and the two. As a Christian, you for me, I don't think I'm going to run into a shelter and sit there and wishing that this thing pass over. Let this virus pass over. The Bible is telling us when the opposition comes, get up, stand. Stand in the way of the opposition. Amen. Be an intercessory prayer warrior. Stand in the gap and pray. Resist the devil. Resist Satan. Talk to them and say, The Lord rebuke you, Satan. The Lord rebuke you. Yes. Amen. The Lord rebuke you. Coronavirus. Rebuke you. That you wither away, you dry up your virus all the way down to your roots, all the way from where you came from. 
back in China. You're going to wither away. You're going to die. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. If you agree with me, clap your hands. And you be a community of Jesus from all your God. Hallelujah. So don't be afraid. But you're a child of God. Nehemiah. The scripture that we read, 1718, it's telling us you that we work and we fight. Amen. Fight against Satan. Fight the spirit of Antichrist. You notice that? You notice it? This spirit of Antichrist is popping up among the leaders, the government leaders. You're beginning to see it. That's the way the Bible describes when they happen. Yes, the first thing we jump on is Paul, they're going to give you the number 666. Yes. Yes, but that's after. In the last seven years, that's when that's going to happen. But now, this spirit of Antichrist is just not giving us hints. And God tells us, be watchful, be alert for it. And he's using fear as it is doing now. Oh, the second virus. Pretty soon you're going to be walking around in a bubble, probably. <laughs> you come off a trip and boom, 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 boom. <laughs> See? That's why this government is gone. But the real one, the Antichrist, uh, his government is going to start in Europe, where the Holy Roman Empire was. Okay. But this is just a sign for uh, the children of God to be watchful. That's why he says, preach the gospel. Preach the gospel, but fight also. Acts chapter 1 and verse 8 tells us, You shall receive power. When the Holy Ghost is come upon you, Amen. You shall receive power when the Holy Ghost comes on you. You shall be a witness to me. Amen. 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 Preach the gospel. Preach Acts 2 and 38. And to the uttermost part of the world. If we are afraid, we won't reach out. If we are afraid of this virus, we want to reach out to the world. I don't know why we limit God and His power. Amen? Why do we limit God? The power of God is limited. You, you get pray, I get prayed for. Use me as an example here. If I get prayed for some for some kind of sicknesses or disease and I walk about, walk back to my chair and I'm thinking, am I really here? <laughs> right? God heal you from cancer. You walk away. I wonder what my doctor will say. Right? We limit God. God heal you. I should 
It's got to believe that God healed. I'm going to be what? Rejoicing. Rejoice. That means thanks. Jesus rejoiced when he heard every manner of sicknesses and diseases were healed by the hand of his apostle. Jesus rejoiced. It means Jesus thanks for hearing that report. Amen? Hallelujah! Yeah. You should look into the Hebrew. Hebrew words. What they really mean. Amen? Rejoice in the Hebrew means Jesus, he danced. When he heard, people are getting healed. When he heard, devils are being cast out. When he heard the blind were seen, when he heard the lame were walking, Jesus danced. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. That's why he said, "You shall receive power." Hallelujah. Amen. Second Corinthians four and eight. He says, "What that we are troubled." On every side, yet not distressed. This is what Apostle Peter was talking about. The lion, Satan, the devil, walking around us. Amen. So there's trouble on every side around us. But he says what? But we are not distressed. Yeah. Let the whole line walk around. I'm not distressed. Amen. We are perplexed. Not in despair. <laughs> yes, the devil is there. I'm not worried about it. The devil is defeated. Yeah. Jesus stepped on his head. Death is defeated. Jesus arose on the third day. So why should I be perplexed? Right? Oh man, I hope they still have total pickings. Check out training folks. <laughs> right? yeah. We need to depend on God. He's going to provide. Yeah. He's going to provide the healing. The Holy Ghost in me, this power, the Almighty God, the everlasting Father that's in me, the Counselor, the, the wonderful God that does miracle in me. When I lay hand on you, it's not me. God is using my hand. The Holy Ghost is using my hand as I put it on you. It is God, the mighty God, Jesus himself, healing you, touching you. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. You need to understand that. Don't worry. Deuteronomy 31 and 8, it tells us that God goes before us. That he will be with us. Yeah. He will not fail us. He will not forsake us. Fear not. 
neither be dismayed or terrified. Yeah. Fear not. Yeah. God's not going to forsake you. Amen. Amen. So when God heals you from a certain sicknesses or diseases, it will never come back on you. You get it? If he heals you from cancer, at the end of your life, you're not going to die from cancer. You can die from old age or whatever. When God heals you, He heals you. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Hallelujah! So here, He tells us, I was not failing. I was not failing. Ask in my name, and I'll give it unto you. If his opposition comes, ask in my name. He'll come in one as a group from one opening. But when I step in, I'm going to scatter them. They're going to run this way. They're going to run that way. They're going to run every which way but loose. <laughs> yeah. right? So in the morning, stand by the front door and say, Jesus, in your name, I rebuke every spirit that are opposed against you. Every spirit of sicknesses and diseases are rebuked in, the, in your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, this is the day that you made, and I will rejoice in it, and I will be glad in it. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Open your Bible to Job chapter 2. This is the battle that's going to take place when the seven vials are poured out in the book of Revelation. But he talks about it in the book of Job. Joel and here, this is what? Part of the kingdom of God. Joel chapter 2, verse 3. A part devour before them, and behind them a flame burning. Amen. That Holy Ghost, the fire, because of the holiness, the fire that was sitting on top of them on the day of Pentecost, is going to be going before you. Amen? A fire, the roar before them and behind them a flame burneth. The land is as the garden of Eden before them and behind them a desolate wilderness. Yea, and nothing shall escape them. See, the Holy Ghost, the fire, because of the holiness, if you have it, in you and on you as the shadow of his wing. Wherever you go, there might be sicknesses, diseases in the air. You might go to a Walmart or whatever. But as you go in, that fire, that Holy Ghost, 
Ghost. It's going to go before you. It's going to destroy the sickness and the diseases, the virus and the flu that people might have and did before you. So you will not come in contact with it because this Holy Ghost fire is going before you and behind you a flame. See how you're protected? And he says what? It's going to be like the Garden of Eden. You ever have been in the Garden of Eden? God can show you these things. Amen. Hallelujah. How was this? Amazed about it. I never really thought on it until Monday when they said, Give me shut down all the businesses again. And, and I thought, You know, I went to God with that question. I said, Why am I afraid? Why am I fearful? And God showed me these scriptures. He says, against the opposition. Right? Hold the sword. Hold the two. Your Bible study chart over here. The Bible over here. And fight. Don't back down. Always move forward. Oh, move forward because I'm going before you as a flaming fire. Amen. Hallelujah. What a mighty God that we what? Have. God strengthen us and He 